Okay, so I'm going to talk about storybook and story shot testing with Vue, obviously. Um, oops. So I'm Tracy Olinka. I'm a web application architect here at uh, Bloomberg BNA. And Bloomberg BNA basically focuses on the legal and tax sphere uh, of Bloomberg products. So basically, we, I guess the tax people joke that you help people avoid paying taxes, something like that. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Storybook. So Storybook um, is, um, allows you to develop UI components in isolation. And there's a lot of add-ons for Storybook. So you can do more than that. You can actually use it to document your design system or document your application. Um, you can use it to document a pattern library. So it's just more than um, developing component, UI components. Um, so I want to walk through how to set up Storybook and some of the features of it and then how we do Okay, so Storybook, I recommend everybody just go to the Vue CLI 3 and do it that way. Um, so there's a plugin for Storybook, and then you're going to need to add a dependency uh, Storybook, um, a, um, a Storybook View Router dependency. And when you set up Storybook, you're going to have this, it's going to add these stories. Um, uh, basically, you'll have a Storybook directory that has an add on and a config file, and then a directory for your actual stories. And I'm going to show you all that stuff. So I just wanted to give you an example of what a storybook config can look like. And you can see that I actually, um, so you have a config, a decorator that we for story router. Now I'm loading the stories individually, and I'm doing that because I had a conflict with an add-on, and I documented in my code that you can look at. So I went ahead and did it individually. Because really, if you have a lot of stories, it's obviously not the way to go. But for this small project, it works fine. Um, I haven't really figured out a workaround. Well, I kind of did, but it's hacky, and I don't really like it. So, um, so let me just go ahead and show you um, some code. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Well, actually, before I do that, let me show you what story book looks like. Okay, so this is actually the the website that I created that we're going to look at. Um, so. Um, so I use this thing called Faker, so I just thought. So just a bunch of, um, you know, little article summaries, an author, a summary. You can click on, have an author page. You can click on, you have an actual story page. So it's a little quick little app I built. Okay, so this is what Storybook looks like when you first create it. So you've got nothing there. So we need to add some content. So I'm going to do that. And you all can stop me anytime if you have any questions. Okay, so um, basically in the story directory, can you all see it okay? So in the story directory, you're going to create your, yep. What? Zoom in more? Okay. Is that, is that better? Oh. Is that good? Okay. All right, so. Um, so anyway, so um, you'll see that the, the stories are called like, the, I always, whatever the app is, or whatever the component I'm um, doing the story for, so the, the footer.story.js, that's the most important part, is .story.js. So you import, and I'm not going to do a lot of live coding, because this one here says I'm painful to watch typing. So anyway, um, that's what he says, because he types very, very fast, and this is why he's uh, stories of, oops, then from, uh, story, I'm oh, sorry, at storybook, storybook, and you. So, um, one thing that I didn't mention, the storybook actually really started with the React community and then view, and then, so I don't know if anyone, you actually use storybook? I should have asked you that. No. I know you have. So, um, anybody else actually use it? Right. Right, so, well, okay, so I don't know if I fixed your particular problem, but when I went to the Vue CLI, I did have problems that I document in there and I worked around. Um, we use Storybook um, probably a bit differently than a lot of people do it. So we use it more for visual regression testing, which I'll talk about after I show you how to set it up. Um, but I know Politico, they just told me they started using it, so we can maybe a little bit later get how, since they're how they're using it. 
Um, I actually should, um, after this, I um, actually, before I do this, let me just show you real quick. I know I just, um, um, there's actually a storybook example of uh, example, so you can see how people are actually using it. It doesn't solve your problem, but you can see how people are actually using it. And one of the um, nice ones I like is a lonely planet. And they actually show their colors and they actually show, um, you know, different components and um, like, which I think is kind of more how Politico is using it. So they have all their different components. Um, and they actually, there's a slider. Oh, here it is. Slider. And this slider is kind of nice. This with add-ons, you can make the slider work and stuff like that. So, but anyway, this is a good example. If you could take a look, you could take a look at how people are actually using it. Doesn't I mean there are some bugginess to it. The documentation sucks, but you know, um, it, it works well for what we're doing. And I think with the newest versions of Storybook, the documentation is getting better, and it being brought into Vue CLI will make it even easier to work with. I think. Right. Um, cause if, for example, with Vue CLI, with the old version, you had to have a Webpack config for storybook and you don't have to do that anymore. So, so cause it uses whatever you're using for your development Webpack config. So I think it may solve some of those problems. And I think Storybook's actually only a couple of years old, actually, maybe three years old, something like that. I don't think it's that old. Actually. So anyway, yeah. All right. So back to, to this, um, Okay, so, um, and then you just want to import whatever component you're doing. So, um, we're going to do the footer. Uh, and then we're just going to write our story, stories of... Um, so I always just name them, whatever, um, whatever the component is. I just literally name them the same thing. It's just my way of doing it. And I actually started using this cause I went to a view conference, the view conference in, um, in, uh, March and they saw a presentation on storybook and I thought, oh, this is cool. And came back and we started using it. So, um, I'm missing a what? Oh, yep. Yeah. See, this is why he doesn't like when I do it. Um, add. Um, and then I just always, my first story I write, I always do all the options, so I just call it default. Um, whoops. Uh, whoops. Whoops. And then you just have to write components. This looks really like, it's very Vue-esque, right? It looks like you're doing a single file component. So you write and you just have to put your template in string and it's just like you were going to invoke or um, call a child component, it's the same way. Yep. Okay, so and then Prettier formats it all nicely. Okay, so the other thing is we have to go up here to the config and you would normally just add it, right? I, because I have to do it manually, we'd add it, but this case and um and so storybook has the hot module replacement hot module yeah replacement so it should just be in there so there's the first story and so it's just called the footer and then de whatever I called it default whatever you call an add just up there so that's the first one okay so that's great but there's no data in this one so whatever it's just a, a it was a component that's all hard it's like basically hard coded well what about a component like this here, the story card. So there's data in there. If you, look, you know, how do I how do I do that one? So because all I'm doing is um, pulling in the actual component. So like when you're doing view, you would actually pass in a prop or something, right? So how are we going to do that? So let's take a look and see how to do that. 
And the live coding's over, so Ron, you can rest. I'm not bitter, Ron. <laughs> okay, so here is the article card component, and you can see the props. Um, and by the way, we started writing this um, with the scripts on top and then template and style, and I really like this way of doing it. Yeah, I, I would have never thought, but I really like it because, you know, you always use scripts and templates together and templates and, and, and CSS, you, but you never use CSS and scripts, so I really like this way of doing it. But anyway, um, so anyway, there's um, our props, article and show author. So they're the only two props that we have to somehow pass in to these stories. So what we do is, so it's just like the other ones, we, we, um, we bring in the stories of, and then the article card component, and then we just mock the data, basically. And so this is just how we'd be getting the data. And so then what we do is we just do a data return, just like you were doing a view single file component. And then, um, so the first one is, um, is what I call default because everything's there. And the second one is don't show the author. So we're passing in show author. Because if you go back to the story, I actually have, I mean, if you go back to the actual component, you see that I have, it's not required and the default is true. So that's how you would deal with, um, um, with the um, data. So just kind of like how you, oops, wrong one. Just kind of like how you would do it if you were doing unit tests or something, right? So any, any questions or, no? Nope. You have a perplexed look in your face. Nope? Nope, okay. Um, so anyway, that's how you would do that. So I need to go and add it. Okay. So then go here. Now we have article card and we have the default. So here's the data and then, and then don't show the author. So the author's not shown. So this is all groovy and everything, but, um, it doesn't, um, look that, you know, Nice, right? So, um, I mean, it doesn't really look like, here's the app, right? So there's no background, the, the fonts are different. Um, it doesn't really look the same, right? So, so what do we do about that? So this is how I solve the problem. So there could be other ways to solve the problem, but this is how I chose to do it. So what I do is I create this app storybook view component that's only for a storybook. And what I do is I just use a slot to put all the, all the uh, stories in there. Um, and I have this asset global. So I'm not big on global CSS because I feel like you, I spend all your time overriding it. But I will do the true globals I will have in the CSS, the really true globals. Like maybe, if, um, in this case, I just put a width um, to make life easier. But... Um, you know, the color, the font family, the true globals I'll put in there. And so this app story book view allows me to bring the true globals in. And so what I do is with a decorator, which you don't like <laughs> or you have problems with, I um, um, bring in this component. Uh, and I got to bring it. Okay, so you just, you import the component, you, you know, create the component, and then you do the decorator. And then you, story is where the story is going to show up. There could be another way to solve this. With this whole decorator thing, this template, you can actually put, you can actually put CSS in there, or widths, or whatever you want to do. This is just the way I, I chose to solve the problem. And so... Right, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's just the way I chose to do it. But I've seen other people just actually write HTML around it or whatever. So, but I just, I don't want to have multiple codes. I just have the, I like to do in the global CSS because I don't have to write it twice, right? I, don't, I just, I don't want to write it. So, yeah, so that was just my solution, but there could be another way to do it. So, so now I just have to hit refresh. Yes. Go back where? Ha. 
How did I name the story tag? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Yes? Right. Sorry, that's a storybook. That's how storybook does it. That's what's uh, the tag from storybook. So it means any story is going to go into there. Right, but you, when you're bringing in storybook, you're bringing in all that tag there. So when you import a storybook, I'm technically bringing it in through that way. Right, right. So it's going to re story is going to be replaced with whatever this story tells it to replace it with. So in this case, it's the component. I think of it as a slot, right? I would think of it as a slot for storybook. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, so, so that's how I solve that problem. So, oops, sorry. Whatever. Okay, so the next thing I want to, is there any other questions before I move on? Talk about add-ons. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is add-ons. So there's actually a lot of really great add-ons that I think what, what makes Storybook really powerful. So not every add-on is going to work. Like I said, it came from React, so not every add-on is going to work with Vue. Did you have you run into yes. some? Like what what add-on did you want? Like that knob thing? Oh, I thought it was supposed to be supported. Oh, okay, so. Right. Right, so, so yeah, definitely when I had my specific problem, I couldn't find anything anywhere. It was just, uh, yeah, so that's true. I think it's because it's not, you know, not, there's other things besides Storybook you can probably use, and the, the documentation is like so so, so. But. I just thought it, I liked that it integrated pretty nicely with um, Vue. And the reason that we really use Storybook is because Story Shot. That's the big reason we use it. So, which I'll come to. But so, yeah, you may have some problems here or there. Yes. All questions are appropriate. Right. I think you can because if you look at the examples, people are doing kind of stuff like that. I mean, I don't know about the API calls parts, but they're doing stuff that's way more than I would ever. So I would look at the I would, yeah, I would look at the examples because some of them are doing some pretty interesting. Things. So, right. I mean, I I think you can. I mean, I think you can do anything. I mean, I, I mean, it's just JavaScript, right? So anything you can do with JavaScript, technically, you can probably do with that. So, you have a thought? You feel like it with the. Visual regression is the real reason. So, but I think you can do it, and I would definitely take a look at the examples um, and, and see what people are doing, but. Uh, Yeah. But I, I mean, I think you can make it whatever you want, right? I mean, but that's the, the, you know, I would just take a look at examples to see if anybody's doing that. But most people just mock the data, right? Because you want to separate it out, right? So. Um, okay, so, okay, yeah, so uh, let me just start. I just want to switch branches real quick.
Is this painful for you, Ron? <laughs> um, okay. We, we pair programs sometimes together, and he just like can't take it. So that's why. <laughs> And he knows. <laughs> so obviously I work with these two here, right? So. Okay, so add-ons. So there's add-ons, and sometimes they can be buggy, and they don't all work with you. But these are some of the ones that we work with. And most of the add-ons are pretty easy. You just, um, like if with VCLI, you would add them as a dependency, or if you do it the old way, you know, the old um, yarn, add it as a dependency. And then usually in this um, this config storybook add-on, you just do this import. And for most of them, that's all you have to do for the simple ones. But there's some that are a bit more, have more to it that you have to do something to. So for like this note one, which I'll show you in a mo moment, you actually in the config, you just have to add it with the decorator. There's some other ones where you have to actually mess with Webpack. So with the new Vue CLI, I haven't quite worked all that out yet. <laughs> um, but I mean, new VCLI has a way to you to work with Webpack. I just haven't personally figured it out yet. Um, uh, anyway, so um, so uh, let me show you. Real quick. Let's see, so we have so we have all these. Then, like I said, for this note one, oops, whoops, sorry. The decorator, room, room. Oh, and you obviously have to import it too. Any decorator, you have to import whatever you're going to decorate with. Um, so you come back here, let's take a look. So, so this is actually, these are the add-ins. Can you all see this okay, or do I need to enlarge it? A little larger? Okay. So this is actually what I really find interesting, is you have these different add-ons, so auction logger, viewport, and notes. So the notes ones, um, you can write notes. So this actually could be great for documentation. Forget about, I mean, designers could look at this and use this and say what you're doing. So that's one thing that can happen. You can write notes and use this as your documentation for people to come after you. Like if you just build the app and you're the person who builds it and goes on, you can use it for documentation. Um, so that's kind of neat. Another cool thing is that you have these viewports. And part of the viewports is you can actually go and look at it, what it looks like. Okay, so I clearly screwed something up when I did this. Um, but you can see what it looks like. Um, so that's kind of nice. Let's go look at something that doesn't look so bad. So, what the hell? Okay, I swear it was not like this before. Ron, did you, uh, like, leave me some kind of present in my code? Oh, my God. Like, I, I swear to you, before, it did not. It actually it flowed nicely. But anyway, so you can see, okay, there's something wrong, so you can go back and look at it, figure it out. Um, and there's this action logger, which actually will log whatever the action is. So for this example, it's going to, it's looking for, in the view router, it's going to go, which is why you need the, the view router, it's going to look for article, right? You can actually hook this up to work more like a website. You can actually, there's a thing called add-on links, there's a, a links, add-on links or links add-on or something, where you can actually, um, actually use it to link to other, to different components. So you can make this as robust as you want to spend time doing. Um, so, um, so that's basically that. Is there any questions or... So, okay, so what we, the reason we really use, um, we use uh, Storybook is because of StoryShot. So StoryShot is a regression testing, and our visual regression testing. So there's basically three kinds of testing, right? There's unit testing to test your logic. There's end-to-end -end testing to test the functionality. You click a button, it does what the button's supposed to do. Um, and then there is the visual regression. And that's actually taking an image, whatever you need. And, and, and when you may change the code, you create another image and you compare that image. So this is really good, like if you're going to do like a CSS or HTML, it's really what it's testing. It's really testing your CSS and HTML, which can be really handy if you got people working with your app that aren't that great at CSS. Or, um, you know, you change one component and, or, and you don't realize there's this, um, there's a cascade in this, uh, these pages that you forgot, like maybe you're doing some kind of refactoring or something. 
and you change this component and you forgot it's included in this one page and I need to make one little tweak. And that's happened to me more than once because you have a component and then you have a bigger page that's in. Well, maybe the width is slightly different for that page for that component. And so maybe you need to make adjustments for that. So that's happened to me on more than one occasion where the visual regressions really like caught mistakes I made or, or really components that I missed. Um, so I already explained that, so whatever. Um, so story shot right now, you need two things. You need to add on the story shot and you need to add on the story shot puppeteer. So puppeteer has been around. I think Chrome's the one that does it. I don't know if any of you ever use puppeteer. So, but you have, yeah. So it's like from Chrome, right? Okay. Yeah. So Chrome did it. And, um, so you, it uses puppeteer. So you have to add these two. You don't have to use puppeteer. You can use other ones that'll do what puppeteer does, but puppeteer is uh, usually the, is the common and actually, it used to be you had to it, puppeteer was uh, bundled into story shot and they uh, story shot and they split it off. So you have a choice to use in whatever kind of runner you want to use. Um, so the big thing is that um, looks like the, um, the big thing is with uh, story shot it uses just right. Okay, so in your just config, there's, you have to add this transform ignore pattern and the snapshot serializer. And it actually uses just serializer views. So you have to add these two things. The other thing is that StoryShot says in their docs that you need to use view just preprocessor or some other, pro or view just processor or some other one. So I use that and I had a, and this is the crazy part. I had a conflict and I have it in my, doc I've documented it in my code. Um, I had a conflict with actual storybook. So I want to use StoryShot with Storybook, and they were in conflict. And I just said, what the hell, I'm going to try to use just regular Vue.js. And it worked. So I say as long as it works with using Vue.js, just use, use Vue.js. And it could be that with some kind of upgrade, the, the, comp, the problem that existed before doesn't exist anymore. I'm not sure. But um, so um, I would just say use Vue.js unless you find some kind of problem. Um, so... With StoryShot, you have to create this test config file. Um, so it's just, it's a store. It's in your uh, it's in your stories. It's a story. Um, oh, that should be a comma. I mean a slash. At StoryShot uh, test.js, um, and basically it's pretty standard setup. The one thing I want to point out is that um, because it uses Puppet, Puppeteer, Puppeteer default width is like when it creates these story shots, it increases these images, it's 800 by 6. So that's what it's, that's the viewport, and that's the default. That may not work for you. So I, this is the code to change it. Um, it actually, the height will auto do the height, so you don't have to, but you can't do it. You have to put the height in requirement. So I just put it as 100 or whatever. So it's the width I care more about. Because if your viewport is, like if you want to do your desktop view, and your desktop view can in at like 960 or whatever, then, you know, if your width is 800, then you've got a problem. So, um, so that's the thing to, um, and, and with store, with Puppeteer, you can go to the Puppeteer code or documentation. You can make all kinds of adjustments with that. It's pretty, it's pretty extensible that way. Um, so basically what happens with uh, story shot is you, it's, like I said before, it creates an image. You can change your code, uh, change your code, whatever. You run it again, it does a diff. So let's just, and it runs with just, so with your unit test. So when you run your unit test, it's going to run the story shot test. Um, so if any of you use just the story, what is it, snapshot? You, I don't know if he did, a, you did a thing on uh, unit testing. It's snapshot, right? And so snapshot, it runs on the snapshot. It hooks into the snapshot feature or, or process, so. Um, so, So the difference here is now I have, um, so it used to be before, before v, Vue CLI 3, you would actually have to have, um, in here you would actually have to have like your, like any, some, sometimes you'd have to put some customized Webpack configs in there. 
Um, cause it didn't always take everything that you needed. Like, so we were doing stuff with, um, SVGs. We had to have SVG loader in there. You had other things. You had to, I don't know if you remember Ron, everything we had in there, but we had to put some stuff in there. So that's kind of nice about the, the view CLI three, that it basically just uses whatever you use for development or in production it will use. So, um, okay. So here, oops, components. There it is. So anyway, here's the story shot. And um, so there's, it's, see here, there's a the custom diff config. That actually is your threshold. So if it's zero, it means no changes. Like color changes, spacing changes, everything, flag it. You can adjust that, like you can do it at 0.5 and maybe a light gray to a darker gray is not gonna notice, but it'll notice the spacing. So you can play with that threshold. Cause it, you know, I want it to be, anything changes I wanna know, but maybe you don't wanna be that picky, so. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. Make sure it's cool. Oops. Can't believe that. I think he, I think he got into my computer and did something. Anyway. Okay. So, so yarn unit, I'm sorry, yarn test. So it ran the one the one unit test I have for this code, and then it's going to run all the story shots. And um, so you can see it went through and checked off all. The, it just created the first time, so it created it. So if you go to your stories directory, now you're going to see this image snapshot, and you're going to see all the image snapshots it created. So you can so this would be committed with your code, right? And so you. You should look at this and inspect it and make sure it's right, you know, because you want to make sure. Um, so, but you can see that it, even though it went, obviously went past 100, right? So, in the height. So, that's, it's going to run everything in there. So, now, let's actually go and make a change. So, oh, yep. Um, well, so if you're going to, if you want to do a comparison, this is how it's supposed to look and somebody changes. So I commit the code, right? Okay. And it's way I want it to be. Ron sucks at CSS. He really doesn't. Know. And so he makes some mistake, right? He needs to run that story shot and he has to have the original image that I had created. And then he runs it again. It makes another image and it'll do a diff. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So that's why you need my, the, the story shots that I created, the original one. And and if the diff's what you want, then there's a way to update it, and you can update it. But it may be, because he sucks at CSS, that he can't do the spacing right, or he does the wrong, or he makes a mistake and does the wrong color, or I make a mistake. But that's why you want to, because later on, the change, you want to make sure that it's correct. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, exactly. It's a record. Um, yeah, it's not like unit testing where you would never commit the results of your unit test, right? Right. It's not like that, right? Um, so, um, so anyway, I was, okay, so let's, let's go to uh, components and let's go to article card. So article card is used like in a bunch of different places. So I'm just going to do something really simple because I just want to show you how it works and I'm going to change the color. So I, the color was a global. So I'm going to change the color in this component and I'm just going to make it green. We're in a green jacket. I'll make it green. Um, so now we're going to go and we're going to run the test again. And while it's running, we can go um, here. You can see it's green, right? Okay, I'm going to get rid of that viewport because that's kind of annoying me now. Um, so, okay, so it's it's running. It's still, okay, so now it failed, right? A bunch of failed. So it says that five things failed. So, so what you can do is you come back here. Now you see this new directory called diff output. And so like here's article list. So I have to open it up external. So what happened is this is article list page. All this stuff's green. You see with like a yellow and red, it kind of highlights that's the diff, right? Um, so maybe that matters to you. Maybe it doesn't. 
but um, and like I said, if you adjust it, you can adjust that threshold to decide what you want it to be. So here's another example. No, you don't commit the diffs. Yeah, no, I, I no, you don't commit. The diffs. Yeah. Um, so here's another example. So you could see that I made one change in five places. It has an effect, right? May or may not make a difference. So um, let's say that this is a change that you actually wanted. Then they give you a little, I think they give you the instructions, but you just add um, the code with dash U and it'll update everything. So, okay, this should work with this. Um. So what it's going to do is it's going to update the actual, the actual screenshots, story shots. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, it will do everything, every diff. So everything had a diff. So what I've done, and there's maybe a better way to do it, but if I only have one diff that's wrong or one thing that I want to change, like say I have four diffs and one of them, like you said, is wrong, the other four are correct because I actually really want that change. Okay, so I do something really hacky is I actually delete the original story shots and I run it again. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. That's just how I do it, deal with it, right? It's one of those things like I know there's a better way, but I don't. I, it's quicker for me to delete than it is to actually. So that's my hacky way. Maybe somebody else knows a better way. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. So this is all set up with the Vue CLI. Um, so it um, just tests unit, because it's, it's part of your unit testing, as I said. I mentioned before, it's part of, you can split it off. I just left it the same. So this is the new view CLI. I don't know if you've seen it, but you do test E two E test, you know, unit. So oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, you can do that. You can. You can do this. You can. Well, because this is working off a story. Or no. What is it? Snapshots? Okay, and I don't think. Can you do that in snapshots? Because. So, whatever you can do in snapshots, you should be able to do with this. Because it's exactly what it's hooking into. I'm sorry? Okay, well, so you're going to figure it out. You're going to tell me so I don't have to do this. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow? Okay. Okay, 10 o'clock, I want it in my email how to do it. So, I mean, that's my hacky way. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. That's just the way I do it. Um, so, anyway, so we can go back. See. So, anyway, you can see that. It, so, it re ran them all, right? So, I, I'm sorry, I didn't re-run them. I re-ran re the... the the, the five that were wrong. And let's just go back and look at the message real quick. So all it did is it updated them. You see it says five updated. So it tells you what it did, five updated. So, okay, let's say that, um, let's just go to something else. Let's go to author bio and let's just say, I don't know, I'm just gonna add margin top. Know, 68 pixels, whatever. I don't, whoops. Pixels. What happened? Twice I did that. Okay, so, so you can run it again. We don't want to run that. And so a couple of files will also be messed up. So you can see, I mean, to me, this is really powerful because um, you can easily see if you have a big project how things can, things can be done incorrectly, or you can do refactoring and can mess something up. So to me, this is pretty powerful for that reason. So you can see here's the bunch of, so we're back to the directory, and you can see in here, now we've got three things that are changed, right? And so now it's pointing out that it's got extra spacing on the bottom because I've shoved everything down, right? So all the pages that, and maybe this is what you want, you know, but so this is, so it shoved everything down. So now everything's off, right? That's what it shows you. So, so the way we actually use it is, um, so we use bamboo. I don't know. 
I guess J Jenkins is some people what some people use bamboo. But okay, so we use bamboo, and we every time we push to the remote branch and stash. So we're all in the Atlassian uh, network or Atlassian ecosystem. Every time we push something to our branch, even to feature branch, it runs the unit test, it runs the end to end test, and it also runs the stores. So like before our code even goes anywhere, we even even do a PR, we know if we should do it. So that's what I really like. And the missing piece was we first did the unit testing, then we did the end. And to me, this was the missing piece. Because a lot of times, a little the, the, this would be off a little bit. And we have really designed. They like things to be a very certain way. And also some of the stakeholders like things a certain way. But this has actually saved me because I've actually done refactoring and I miss an entire, uh, you know, container of a component like I just forgot that that was there and because I forgot it was there I did things that I probably shouldn't have done and the test came back and said you know the, the bamboo said oh by the way big red message you're these are all the things you screwed up so so that was nice because I would have pushed all that code through and I can't say somebody necessarily would have caught that in a PR right because that's a that's a flow that you're not necessarily going to catch it and so that's only going to caught it won't end to end test is not going to catch it because if you can push a button and the button works, it doesn't care where the button is. That's not how end to end test works. So this would have got caught if, uh, if you had a manual QA, which we try not to have anymore, um, or you know an end user. So to me, that's why this is really important. Questions? Um, Um, so we don't. Oh, we're tagging for looking at this. Yeah, like we have a PR. Okay. We could. That's actually you could do that. So right now we don't have a, we don't have a standalone storybook, right? So we don't. So we have storybook in our code. Um, we don't have it. We don't have a server writing. We don't have a standalone. That's something we could totally do, though. Yeah, we have talked about doing. So go ahead and say whatever. Oh, you mean the um, you mean uh, oh yeah, um, they talked about that a little bit. Um, I um, they did talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you're right. They actually did. You're right. They actually talked about having the designers look at the stuff do like that. Um, we don't actually have a set or set up, but that's actually a great thing to keep. We can have them. Through you know, approve this component or, or approve these story shots. That actually would make make sense the first time around. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah. Right, exactly. You could totally do that. You really would have to have a standalone, which we don't have right now, but I don't think that's really that hard to set up. We just have, okay, why haven't we set up a standalone? Difficult? Right. Okay. Yeah, so I don't think it's really that hard. But because right now we we use Docker to deploy everything. So Docker goes and spins up Storybook. Docker spins up the end -to -end testing stuff. Everything's done with Docker. You spin it up, and then it just or whatever. I didn't see anything. It just stores itself or whatever it does. And right. So that actually could that would actually. Get the designer. I'm sorry. What about the other one? Right. I mean, that's actually a really good idea. Um, I'm working on a project right now that we really don't have a design to, so it's kind of a problem, but. Um, but that would actually make a lot of sense. So any other questions? Uh, so we don't use it to develop components. We use it after the fact, right? And because you saw how easy it was. I mean, the only thing burdensome is doing the mocking. Right? That's, to me, that's the only thing that's burdensome. And I don't really, you know, a lot of the data looks almost the same. So. You can kind of repurpose it. I, like, I don't really feel like it's that burden. 
Um, I just really like feel like I don't want to work without this because, okay, so I first heard about visual regression, like, I don't know, eight years ago, and I thought, CS, why are you testing CSS? Like, like that's insane. Um, or six years ago, whatever. It was a long time ago, and I just thought it was absolutely insane. But now that I'm using it, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to live without it, right? So it may act a little bit, uh, obviously, okay, so way, on the project I'm on now, the way we do it is, we do the unit testing. The developers actually write the end-to-end -end test, and we actually write the end-to-end -end test. So we actually have three layers of testing. Obviously, the, the developer has to write the unit test, but it's the end-to-end -end testing, story shot test. That's the question of who's doing it. But I don't even want to push my code anywhere unless it's the end-to-end -end test. So I like to test it locally. Um, technically, now we don't have to test it locally. We can test it in the logo. But so I don't, I don't really find it personal, but that's just me. I don't know, Ron. Because story shots also caught stuff you've done, right? I mean, this is a really small app, but can you imagine this is a really huge app? Like we have, like I think, new news or me, or even a bigger app. Do that visually to have a designer sit down and visually do that. At least you could say, okay, here's the discrepancies, like you all were saying. Here's a discrepancy. Here's a discrepancy. We know this other stuff's fine. You don't need to. So. I, so we don't really use it as a design system, and I have all kinds of. So I'm not the biggest fan. Right. So I, I believe in style. I believe in code style guides. I actually believe in design stuff. But as far as the design system where here's the component, because really a design system is just here's the component, right? Here's the component. You can use it across all this stuff. So it's more than just like, like here's the, here's the actual code for the component. That's the part that I don't really But that's just me. So, so we actually aren't using it as a design system. There is a team here that actually creates a design system. Um, so I think the, the, so actually doing the story shots, yeah, I would wait. Me personally, I would wait, but actually setting up storybook, there's no reason not to do that. I would do the storybook, but I would wait on the story shots. I guess that's, yeah, so, yeah, I have a whole, I have a whole, I have lots of thoughts on story systems. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, okay, so we do everything in bamboo, um. This, this actually, I don't know, I think this one probably takes, the, do you think this takes longer than the end-to-end -end testing? This one seems to take longer. I, you don't think it's more than that? Because we have quite a bit. Because I, I went a little crazy and I did everything. But I mean, you know, we're just we're just sending it off there. It's doing it. It's not like, right? I mean, I think the longest, excuse me, we've ever had in a build is like ten minutes, right? And I'm not sure how long of that was actually waiting because we had a process. Oh, okay, you're laughing. Is that like, is that fast? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We can do it without, but that's we've made that choice though. We want it because we it's it's it. I have to say, it, all this testing has saved my butt so many times. Like, I don't, I don't get, I don't, right, right. You could, but it's, it's all integrated part of our process because when we do the build, we build the image and then we take that image and we use it for the intent testing. So we also, I mean, it's like all simultaneous. I don't know. You know more about the build process. No. No, you don't? Okay. <laughs> you just pretend you do? So. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm. 
You probably could. You probably could. I mean, well, so what we do is this this doesn't, this will never, so we do feature branches, and when we push it to the feature branch, it automatically, every feature branch gets a build. So it never will get into the master release, right? Yeah, so that's how we. Yes. Oh, and actually, you know one of the best things when I, if everybody took these three types of testing away from me, I would go down because I now do all the different types of testing. And you've seen, like, oh, I don't have it here, but you've seen that your, what your package JSON looks like, right? I swear if you go on for like, you have 50 things in there, right? And so I'm doing the dependency updates now, and I can just go update them all in one shot. I run all the tests, and then I can find out. If, and, and now if there's some that generally I, anything that's marked red, like the, broken, I won't run those. But I will, often I, I can do a whole package of 20 dependencies that need to be updated that are labeled green so they probably won't break. I can do it all in one shot, I can run all these tests, and then okay, hey, I don't have to worry about it. Because before this, I was doing like a couple dependencies at a time, mainly going and checking myself. That's just so ridiculous. That's a dumb way to do it. So I just find this whole package together. And I've even had, like if you're going to do an update for post-CSS or something, that's when the stuff can start breaking. Um, it depends, so there may not, well, it depends on what you're doing. So if you are just um, doing some refactoring that has really nothing to do with CSS, but you may be accidentally doing it. It didn't really, you, de you deleted a line by accident, didn't even realize it, right? It just, you never know. It's going to catch it for that. Or if you actually, now sometimes these bits are, you want them to change. But then you, um, you can do an update or you can do what I do sometimes file that the actual screenshot and just because if you delete the screenshot or the, the image it'll regenerate it no I did it locally I'm sorry I delete the original on my local but it's all part of the coding it'll trigger the new one I'm just I, I admit that's a hacky way to do it but that's sometimes what I do right right exactly sorry I didn't mean to be so yeah exactly right. Right, right. But well, like I, I change all the colors. I change this. I change that. I just delete it up front because I know this is what I want. And I can go look at a storybook and see what I want. But sometimes I make all these changes. Like I'll do refactoring. I don't even look at anything. Ron does that all the time. I thought he was crazy. But now I understand that you have all these tests. You can just change your code and you don't even need to look at it. Right, but maybe that's okay. Okay, so no, but there's that, that there's something called the threshold. That maybe you want to adjust this threshold. Um, there's, I had the link to the documentation. Um, so maybe you want to adjust the threshold to be like point. Um, no, it's like some, it's not a percentage, it's their, whatever they have. Let's go look at it real quick, because honestly, um, so, so like, it's just a, it's just an integer, so you can have point, you know, 0 0.5, yes, I, I, any pixel. So here, okay, the failure threshold can be, okay, you can do this percent, apparently. So this, so, so they have options. I'm just, I, I just want to know every change. That's just how I am. Uh, and this, it, 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 with bigger apps, it may not make any sense, right? I actually think our app is, I think the new uh, BLB is like 0.5 or something. I think, except that it's not, it's not as tight as this, right? But, but I want to change it.
Right, exactly. The margin of error and margin of error. Right. So uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just really picky. I want to know every little thing. So that's just especially if you have to if you're supposed to do if you're doing pixel perfect design, which if that ever exists, but whatever, then you may want to know everything. So, but, and they talk about like, if you, you know, like colors, like if you have it at a point, I do remember in the docs, it said, um, if it's 0.5, it's not going to, it's not going to catch like, a, a you know, maybe different types of gray. If you have like 0.5, it's not going to catch that. So, so yeah, so definitely, and there's other options you have. This is just what I have. So. Uh, yeah, it's right, right, right. No, no, no. That's actually something I've been I've been wondering about. How to you mean know, because there was CSS. You have to write your CSS. And, okay, so a lot of our, as you know, a lot of our customers and clients are with um, the UIU, right? A lot of government types, big offices with UI eleven. So that has always been a concern because sometimes. Um, can make a change and it works great in Chrome, but it's going to suck. And I've had a big fight since I've got here to get developers to acknowledge it. And nobody wants to acknowledge it. So that is one thing that you can't, that doesn't exist. So it's something I would like to figure out how to make happen, but I mean, this alone, I'm very happy. So we still, I still have to go look at it. I still have to go look at it. Um, Yes, they, they do. do. I know. Well. <laughs> I was looking at them today. <laughs> actually, I, the dev tools, the dev tools are not that different from Chrome, actually. And there's been a couple things where I've been really shocked that I actually like the dev tools in IE, and then I didn't. I, I don't even remember what it is. Actually, I was like, wow, this is like better than. Oh, I think it was with memory. Oh, with memory. Yes, with memory. You can see what the memory load is and what's going on with memory because we're JavaScript. No, just that's where I was worried about memory leaks. Easier and IE to see what's going on with Chrome. You actually have to recording. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So. Yeah, we are, except for grid, because there's issues with doing that, so I don't do that. But everything else is, is out of place. Yeah. Yeah. So does anybody know a good linter for post CSS? Because I haven't found one. Um, actually, so the stats, what I, so the project we, the project that Ron and I started using where we used to do, that was the first one we used, the GraphQL followed view stack. Um, when did we start that, like two years ago? Yeah, so at that point, half of our, half of the customers were using it. I think it now it's gone maybe to 40%, so it's not that. But, you know, like 30% of them are, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh, you know, it's really interesting is Edge actually has, they're really pushing people to go to Edge, and they actually have a thing that will actually, they literally have embedded IE11 into Edge, so you can push the button, and you're using, you're literally using full-fledged IE11, but they want people to actually go to the Edge browser and only push that button when they have to. Like, they're trying, but, you know. But I also read on the uh, Microsoft site, somewhere deep in the documentation, and maybe, I hope to God this is, 
correct, but they were saying that they're not going to stop supporting IE 11 till 25 or ridiculous. You think so? Oh my God! I was hoping it was a nightmare or something. Right. That's not technically. That's not always what happens. But part of it is a lot of they build apps. There's there's some companies have apps that are built to only work on IE. And if they paid a lot of money for that app. They're not going to be so, and, and Microsoft was still supporting 9-11, they're not going to be so, but that, that's worth some of it. Some of it may not let go of it, but some of it, it, there's actually a business reason. And then time, you're telling me to go? No, oh, well, I think that's pretty much it. I, I you know. Yeah, see, questions. <laughs> So if anybody wants to give a talk and you have something they want to talk about. Yeah, this is you. this is the moment where yeah. somebody would come up and show us something really cool. Um, but yeah, check out our Discord. We have a Discord channel if you guys aren't already on it. And um, we have a website, obviously. And uh, you'll find this talk and other talks at our GitHub. So I'm actually the one who's bringing it. I kind of got behind, but I'm trying to keep up and start adding all the talks and the documentation and links to code. So I'll, I'll post that, I'll post the talk, I'll post the slides, and I'll post the talk. And then uh, this is Ben's Twitter. Um, he's going to be covering uh, Vue.js London. Um, and uh, I just thought I'd show this. This is uh, out his window at his hotel, which is kind of funny. Wow! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the exact pun that he... That he that's does. hysterical. Yeah, it's pretty funny. He's a prolific... So we went, all three of us went to his and like his GitHub page with notes of everything. Yep. Yeah, so he'll probably have something up. Yeah. Thank you again, yep. Tracy. Thank you, get on. See you in September 27th.